Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 62-year-old female. She was involved in a motor vehicle accident about six months ago and has had continued pain in her shoulder. She has several findings, and there's one we're going to talk about in this video, which is the axillary nerve. And so this is the humeral head. She has a small little partial thickness rotator cuff tear up top. She has a tear of her posterior labrum. You can see right here, this little curvilinear thing here, a small tear of the posterior labrum, non-displaced. And on this view, if we slide her over, you can see that she has problem back here. This is the deltoid muscle. The posterior aspect, you can see right here, is bright. So a little bit of edema and atrophy of the posterior deltoid muscle. And we know that deltoid is fed by the axillary nerve, so this could be related to a neurological insult or maybe direct trauma from prior, uh, the prior accident. If, but if we go down, 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 we're going to look at the teres minor muscle because it's also innervated by the axillary nerve. And right here you can see that this is a little bit too bright. So if we go up to the infraspinatus, it's nice and dark. Teres minor is bright. So both of these muscles are bright. They have some edema and some atrophy, and they're both innervated by the axillary nerve. So this may be an injury to the axillary nerve related to that MVA. And whenever it's injured, we call that quadrilateral space syndrome. As it goes through the quadrilateral space, it can have a traumatic injury or just some nonspecific scarring um, that can cause the insult of the nerve. And when that happens, they can get some uh, edema in the earlier phases and then eventually fatty atrophy in the later phases. And so this is somewhere halfway in between. They have atrophy and some residual edema. Now we're going to look at that from another view here. Let's put up a coronal T2 view. On the coronal T2 image, we can see this big muscle coming across sideways, nice and dark. This is the infraspinatus. Below that is the teres minor. It's very small. And you can see it's a little bit brighter, too, so a little bit of edema and maybe fatty atrophy, too, down here. And then below the teres minor, we have the teres major. They come both horizontally. The teres minor goes to the back. The teres major goes towards the front, so they kind of go obliquely. And there's also a vertical band here. This is the long head of the triceps coming down here. And lateral to that, we see the humerus. So there's a little space that's below the teres minor, above the teres major, and between the vertical things here, the uh, long head of the uh, triceps and humerus, there's a little space here. This is called the quadrilateral space, and this is where we have the axillary nerve goes from here through there. And again, the axillary nerve will do the uh, teres minor and a deltoid. And uh, so this may be a prior injury. I don't see any inflammation or scarring or anything in here, but they can have a little uh, scarring that doesn't show up on MRI. And again, the quadrilateral space. There's also two other things that go through here. The posterior circum circumflex uh, uh, artery and vein go through here as well. And so this is, again, a case of injury of those muscles, probably related to a neurologic insult um, from injury of the axillary nerve during the car accident. You can't see direct evidence of that, but you see the indirect evidence by the atrophy and edema of these two muscles, the teres minor and the posterior deltoid. And that's it. So thank you very much.